So our lesson, oh, hold on back to that previous okay our last lesson our, our lesson actually this is a lesson tonight okay is roadmaps again okay so this morning when i was going through the charts we had three times we had to put roadmaps on and so i thought it'd be a good idea if we reviewed that really quickly to see how we do that all right so what is a roadmap a roadmap is just simply here's how you have to think about it all right if i was uh let me give you an example from the united states and i'll give you one from europe Okay, if I was going to drive from Austin, Texas, and I was going to drive to Chicago, right? Now, it's more than a one bladder run, all right? So I have to find a place to, to, um, to uh, find a P-stop, right? So how do I do that, okay? I, uh, how do I find where the market might stall? It's a place where I would move my stop. And then it would be a place that if I broke that, I would enter again, all right? So how do we do that? Anytime we have an area where we have something in the future here, so you got this big area right in here, right in here, see that? All right, big wide open space, all right? All right, now I got fibs already in here. Those are the fibs for, the, for, the, for this box here, the range that we're doing, all right? So if I wanna find out where they might stall out and then go again, all I have to do is find the dominant move. I'm on a 60 minute chart, 60 minute chart. I find the dominant move trying to get me in that area. And you can clearly see it's this move right here. That move is trying to get me up into here. Now they were not successful, so they pulled back and now they're trying to go again. All right, so how do we do a roadmap? We simply put a set of fibs on from the swing low to the swing high, all right? And you can see they bounced on the 50% fib, all right? Now, in route to this target, you now have, this is the wide open space, but you're now aware there's a 270 fib right there. This is the wide open space, but you're now aware of the 618. All right. Now, here's what happens. If, you, if you're coming up here and you hit the 270 because it's a potential bounce point to the downside, you know exactly where to move your stop. And in fact, you only move your stop when you have a mathematical reason to do so. So you would move your stop on that 1.270. It's, it's a negative 0 0.270, but we have to give it a negative number to get the, uh, uh, um, the extensions because we only have a key that clicks twice here. Okay. So you would move your stop when you hit the 270 and hang on to here. Your next trade is up here. When you get trade two up here, when you hit the 618, that's where you move all your stops up below the 618 and you hold for the target. Does everybody see that right there? Can you see it? We're gonna do a bunch of them, so don't worry about it again. All right, so what's the purpose here? You need to know their math. Where is their math, okay? What is their math? Both of these sets of fibs are valid. If we break through here in the ATR and we go up here, our next target is here and our next target is here. You see that? So when you hit the ATR, you hold for this target. What happens if I break that target? I hold for that target. What if I break that one? I hold for that target. You see that? That's what you do. All right. So you would pre-plan the trade. Trade one is here. Trade two is on the break here, two. All right. And as we're going here, using the big fibs as the wide open space. But when I hit the 270, that's when I move all my stops up underneath the 270. And I hold. All right. And then if it breaks on through, there's a break hook and go on that fib right there. As soon as it breaks through and hits this fib right here, I move all these fibs up to that uh, fib and hold for the target. Everybody see that? All right. The chart tells you when to move your stop. It's not, oh my God, oh my God, I got 23 pips. I was, oh man, I think I better move my stop. I think I, that doesn't work. You don't do that. You use the mathematical reason, all right? So let's, uh, let's just go back here in the past while we're sitting here on this pound Swissy and let's find one to the, or in the future. Let's look at one in the past, all right? So here you can see, let me just move this over here, all right? They're trying to get us to the downside into this area right in here. All right, so you can see that this is the dominant move. That's the dominant move to the downside. So that's what you fib. That's the movement that the market makers are trying to push it into that area. So we'll pop a set of fibs from the swing high to the swing low. By the way, what I'm doing right now is how you practice it. All right, you gotta do, how many of these you gotta do? 300, all right? So now you can see that I have a roadmap to the downside. This is where I move my stop. This is where I move my stop. And this is where I move my stop right there. All right. 
That's the only places I'll move my stuff. Don't move them unless there's a mathematical reason to do so. Now, let's go see what they did, all right? So you see, they went to the, they knew exactly where that 270 was. Surprise, surprise. And they knew exactly where the 618 was right there. All right? And when we broke through, they knew exactly where the 1270 is. They blew right through it. So right there, these are the only three places you will move your stop. The 270, the 618. If you blow through the 1270, you move your stop to there. And when you get close to this target right here, the, the rule of thumb is whatever, however far away you are from this target, that's what your stop has got to be. All right, so right here, I'm seeing at 98 and, and the target is 85. All right, so that means I have 13 pips. So my stop, if I'm getting right here, can be no more than 13 pips right there. No more than 13 pips from that line. That's it, 13 pips, that's it, all right? See, so what it, what it does is it allows you to put rules on your trading. I got a trade, it's working well, it's awesome. I'm doing well, what do I do? I gotta move my stops, where do I move them? When do I move them? You gotta have a plan for that. What's the plan? It's called a roadmap, all right? Let's do this one back here. I'll take this off. We'll do this one here to the downside again. All right, so here we go. We're trying to get into this area right in here. Now, we're looking for the dominant move trying to get us in here. It's this one right here to here. Can everybody see that? That's the dominant move trying to get us into this area right in here, all right? That's the one you fib. You go back in the past, you put the fib on here from the swing high to the swing low of that dominant move right there. And you can see, now I know where to move my stop. Right here, right here, and right here. Let's see if they knew it. Did they know that line? They knew that line. They blew right through this line, but where did they stop? Right on the one, two, seven, oh. You see that? Now let me ask you something. I just did three. Do you think that they know where those are? Or is Scott just really lucky? Or do you think they know exactly where they are? That's a question. This is an interactive uh, webinar <laughs> they know thank you amanda stephanie the girls are the girls are with me that's all i can tell you the girls are with me right now yeah they know exactly where they were right and in fact you see if you didn't know where this 270 fib was right here if you didn't know where that was and you didn't move your stop it never got to target you see that dang that scott is so lucky right Sai? all right see here's the deal they are using the math now the engineers go man this is awesome i love math i'm in on this all day long i love this stuff okay so they're good with that all right the, the artsy fartsy people i'm an artsy fartsy guy so i'm with you guys the artsy fartsy people have to figure out the math because we don't see it normally we see the whole thing but we don't see that minutia in there see that all right so let's do several more. We're gonna. I want. I want to do a bunch of them because my whole point of this, the whole point of the lesson is, as in always, when I do something in the charts, I want to prove to you that the reason we do that is because that's what they do. All right. So we're going back here. We'll do this up move. Everybody agree that this is the dominant move right here, trying to get us in this area. Would everybody agree that's a dominant move? Yes. No. Yes, thank you, Stephanie. Girls are with me today. Okay, there we go. Oh, thanks, Cy. There you go, Rick. All right. Journo, there we go. We got some more participants. All right, so that's what I got a fib. So the first thing you got to do, artsy fartsy people have a tendency to see that. Engineers don't. They go, wait a minute. I don't know if that's dominant. You know, <laughs> guys are waking up. There you go. So we fib it from the swing low to the swing high of this whole move right there. That's where it topped out and then it pulled back. All right. Now, Let's see if they knew where they were, all right? So they turned and went. They knew exactly where that was. They knew exactly where that was. And they knew exactly where that was. Surprise, surprise. Dang, that Scott is so lucky. He did it again, all right? So what do, what do I show you here? This is what they do. This is why what they do is what you got to do. Does everybody understand that? You got to do what they got to do, what they're going to do. That's it. So I've done four out of four so far. All right, let's go back here. Uh, I'm just sitting here on this pound Swissy because we got big moves in here, all right? Now, you can see that very clear, clearly, this is the dominant move trying to get me into here, all right? It, there's nothing over here that's dominant. That is a nice little move. That's a little floppy thing right here. That's the dominant move right there. 
So you find the dominant move because they were trying to break it in here. They just were not successful, all right? So had they been successful, they would have used these fibs. Well, they ran out of seller, so they did an A, B, C back to the top with a close and reverse, and down they go again. Where are they going to stop down here potentially, and where do I move my stops in this big wide open space? Very simple. Do a roadmap. Find a chart. Where are they going to do the P stop? All right. So here they are. All right. So they're in London and they want to drive to, uh, they want to take the, uh, uh, a, um, uh, a, uh, a drive to the country down to the south of, Fran uh, the south of uh, Britain to the Dover Cliffs. I think that's south. All right. So how, where do you stop on, in route? You got to find a place to do that. All right. So that's where they're doing it. So we're going to, we're going to uh, go from the swing high. Oh, sorry the right tool and it helps swing high right here to the swing God, come on scott get the right tool what's wrong there we go we didn't click off right here to here right there. oh we're gonna go up right here that one right there that's the dominant move click it all right now we're gonna stop all right when they pull back that doesn't change this this doesn't change you notice that oh they will pull back it all changes no unless you had another dominant move here you still go with this one right here all right did they know that 270 absolutely do they know the 618 absolutely do they know the 1270 to the pip to dover thank you si all right, take the M2 to Dover. There you go. All right, so you're taking the M2 to Dover. Where are you going to stop and, and, and use the facilities? That's where they're going to stop and use the facilities. All right, let me ask you, did they know where they were? To the PIP. They knew exactly where they were. That tells you I got to know where that is. All right, so today, as we were going through, we kept going, wow, we got to do a roadmap here. Wow, we got to do a roadmap here. Wow, we got to do a roadmap here. And I thought, gosh, it's been a while since we did a roadmap, and right now they're using them. So let's go ahead and do a class on it tonight. All right, so there we are. Let's go find another one here where we got a nice move into here. All right, okay, let's take this one right here. All right, so you can tell this move to the downside. All right, I got two choices. Can I, I can use this one or I can use this one, A or B? Which one should I use, A or B? A, 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 It's a dominant move, see, all right? So that's the one I use. I, I, my job first is to find the dominant move. I go find uh, Fib, I click from the swing high of this move right here. I don't need that wick. This is where it happened, right here. I go right to there, and I go right to there, see that? Uh, I'm going to go to this one. Sorry, not that. This one right here. All right, there we go. All right. Now, let's see if they knew them. They knew that right there. They knew that right there. They knew that right there. Wow, Scott, you just hit six for six. Six for six. All right. If I'd have traded them, what would my what would my trading success be? Six for six. And I protected myself. I covered my risk, and I knew how to stay into the next target. Gee, I wonder if I should learn to do roadmaps. What do you think? All right, six for six so far. Not too bad. All right, all right. Let me get rid of this fib here, and we'll go back even further. This pound Swissy is really nice. No, I don't want to do. That. I just want to get this fib off of here. All right, all right. So we'll go back in here. Let's find a dominant. There's one right here. This is not a big move here. All right. So th well, this is going to be important right here. All right. So we got a dominant move that doesn't move, but we don't know that. We don't know that that isn't going to happen. So we see the dominant move right there. We pop a fib on it from a swing low to the swing high right there. Right? And you see they knew the 270 and they knew the 618. They never got to the 1270. They never did. They rolled over at that point. All right? Pretty darn essential is right. Exactly correct. All right? So any move that you see a dominant move entering into a wide open space. Here's the criteria. I have a dominant move in place. That means I know what they were trying to do. Would everybody agree that when you look at this chart, of course you can't do it on MT4 because you can't see these bright green candles with an arrow and painted candle and a white dot. Can't see that on MT4. But you can see that that's the dominant move right there, all right? So what you have to say is, okay, they were trying to go. They ran out of sellers and uh, buyers, and that's why they did a flag right here, because they ran out of sellers, okay? But that means they're still trying to get into this area right up in here. So that's why I got to fib that, all right? All right, let's go back in the past a little further here. All right, let's get off the pound Swissy and go to something like the Aussie dollar, not a rock and roller. Let's just go to the Aussie dollar. Right, beginners, beginners, 
So here we are. I'll just go right to this one right here. All right. So you can see here that, that they're trying to get into this area right down in here. There's the dominant move right there. See that one right there. I could do this one right here, but this is the dominant move. See how much bigger it is? See how it goes straight down trying to get me into that area right there? All right. So what has to happen is you've got to go and do hundreds of these so that your brain immediately goes, there's the dominant move. There's the dominant move. There's the dominant move. That's how you do it. All right, we'll pop the fib from the swing high to the swing low right there in that wick. All right, now let's just see if they knew where they go. All right, remember, we know that they're always shooting for the targets. We know where the targets are, but where are they going to stall out and where should I move my stop en route to this double bottom down here? Where should I do it? Okay, well, you can see they knew the 270. You can see they blew right through the 618, but they immediately came back to it right there, made the turn right here. Here's the 1270, and that one stops right there, right? Of course, they did that one above it. That's even nice. That's why you move your stop and you don't click out and limit out. So that's seven for seven right now. Oh, no, I think that's eight for eight for eight. Let's go back here. Aussie dollar. Okay, here we go. Would everybody agree that this is the dominant move trying to get me into this area? Would everybody agree that's it? See how you can see it? It's a dominant move. Dominant move. Find the dominant move. All right. I, I know where the tar the big targets are. They're here. They're here. They're here. And there's one below there, of course. All right. I know where those are. Right. But I need to know where they might stall out and where I need to move my stop. If I'm going to trade this for the whole thing. Now, you know, you don't have to do this if you click out for five to eight pips. But if you click out for five to eight pips, you're not going to make it. The market is going to take your money because you stack the deck against you. So there's no reason to do it. You got to have the paradigm shift that says, I don't do that stuff anymore. All right. All right. So let's pop the fib and see if it works. All right. This, if it works, it's nine for nine here. All right. There we go. All right. So here we go. Do they know the 270? Right there. Do they know the 618? Right there. Do they know the 1270? To the pip. You see that? To the pip. That's nine for nine right there. Gee, I think that might be what they're doing. What would happen if I went back and did 300 of these? If I did 300 of these and I found out that 260 of them did it and 40 didn't, should I put that into my arsenal as something that I should do? 260 to 40, all right? Not going to work 100%. Don't ever count on that. But what if it did 260 of them and 40 of them didn't work? Well, what would you do? Would you, would you include that in your system? You have to because that's what they're doing. So roadmaps, roadmaps will make you a better trader. Why? I know where to move my stops. I know how to manage my trade. I know where the stall points are. I know if they break it, they're trying to go to the next one, right? So I know where the overall targets are, and that's not counting ATRs and the other things that we do. You know, on, on, on Monday night, what we do is we just take one little piece of the Forex, and we break it down, and we try to work on only that little piece, which is exactly how you have to do it when you're all by yourself at home. So Stephanie's there. I'm not picking on Stephanie, by the way. She just happens to be the last one in there. So Stephanie's down there, and she says, you know what? The market was really bad today. I think I'm going to go work on something. What should I work on? Gee, I haven't done my roadmaps. Maybe I should take the time. I'm normally trying to look for a trade that's not going to happen today. Maybe I should take that hour and a half, two hours, and go back in the past and see if I can teach my left brain how to do roadmaps, all right? Now, if Stephanie did that and she spent an hour and a half, two hours, maybe three hours, whatever it happens to take, if she did that, do you think Stephanie would have some information that she didn't have three hours before? Do you think that might be a possibility? <laughs> yeah. Stephanie said, yeah, 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 yeah. Why would you pick on me, right? <laughs> uh, I'm not picking on Stephanie at all. <laughs> uh, uh. That's right. It's awesome. For those who have learned to trust the roadmap, we already know where they want to go. Exactly right. The whole key is your whole analysis tells you their direction. This is what they're trying to do today. Okay. That's a piece of information. All right. Now, how do I create a plan that gets me to where I think they're trying to go? How would I do that? Well, I need to know where to move my stops. I need to know where they might have a bounce point where they won't get there. All right. If they decide to reverse it, I'd need to know where to move my stops for that point. And if they actually go to my target that I think is going to happen, I need to know where are the areas where I should look for other opportunities, but still move my stop to protect myself. See that? What does the roadmap do? 
it solves all of those situations. Does everybody see it? All right, let's go back. Let's, we're going to do a bunch of them here because what I'm trying to do is prove to you a fact. All right. Uh, uh, there you go. Uh, there you go. Nice job, Vess. Okay. And Vess is kind of on the engineering side. So <laughs> Vess is actually a hybrid. He sees stuff and he's also uh, kind of a, a, an engineering type. <laughs> so he sees both sides. Well, we know Vess. All right. So Vess, you're always so smart. Wait on both. And when you get it, there you go. All right. Here we go. I got an opportunity here. All right. I'm looking at this opportunity. Do I do this one or do I do this one? Do I do A or do I do B? Which one should I do? A. A, right? You're already starting to see it. That's the dominant move, all right? So I, I put, take a fib and, and hit from the swing high to the swing low, right? And now I know exactly where I'm going to move my stop. Okay, I got a pullback. Hallelujah. The pullback is my friend. I enter a trade on the pullback here. Where am I going to move my stop? Right there. Do you think they knew where it was? They knew where it was, okay? So I move my stop right above this top right here. Hold my stop. I, I live through that other pullback, but a pullback is my friend. I add a position there. Where am I going? I'm going to this one. Gee, I wonder if I could have made money in there. What do you think, all right? Then I get another pullback. Oh, I know where they're going. They're going to this one right down here. Look where they went, all right? Ta-da, what's that? 11 for 11 or 12 for 12? Same thing, broke the T3, breaks the T3, and heads on down. Exactly right. So I got a, you almost had a zero line cross. You just had a turner at the zero right there. Yeah? All right? All right, that's 12 for 12, folks. Gee, I'm batting pretty good tonight. All right? You know why I'm batting good? Because this is what they do. See, I have no fear about going in the charts. See, me, I've done this 10,000 times. So I don't have any fear about going in and just picking one, say, because I know that's what they're going to do. And if they don't, it's one of the very few that won't do it. All right. So I'm coming back over here. All right. All right. I got this big move to the downside here. All right. And they said they're giving me a hint right here. They're telling me, okay, you got a descending wedge. All right. You're going to break into this area here. Would everybody see? I should fib that right there. That's what I should fib. Would everybody agree on that? Might even take those, you might even take the, the twins up here, all right? Everybody see it? Okay, let's do it. And by the way, what I'm doing is how you practice it. This is what I'm doing. This is how you do it. You go practice it. You got these great charts over here, these majors right here, where you can go over here and you don't have anything on here. This is a quick look. That's why it's called a QL major. So I go over here and all I got on here is candles. So this is where I can do work. I can practice and practice and practice over here. All right. So let's go back to that Aussie. Same spot I was in. All right. Auto scale that. Where were we here? I was back over here. Right over here. Okay. There's the descending wedge going down into the side. So the chart says we made the turn. We broke the T3. We broke the zero line break. We're officially a seller right here. We're making the turns to go down again over here. I got a descending wedge right there. I got to fib that right there to find where do I move my stop in this area? All right. And where, where do I add positions? If I have that opportunity, I pop in here and I pop from the swing high to the swing low. All right. So now I know before it ever happens, because I'm not looking over there to see what it is. Okay. I know that when I break here, my, wherever my target is, ATR, for instance, would be there. But I know I move my stop here. And I know I move my stop here. And if I break into this area here, I move my stop here. That's what I know. I may not know anything else, but that's all I know. Let's see what they did. All right. So here we go. First stop. Right to the 270 fib. To the pip. Stalled. Right there. Went sideways. And what did they do? Broke to the second, to the 618. Stalled. All right. Then they break. And where do they go? To the pip with a wick down there. Dang. 13 for 13. That's Scott. He's so stinking lucky. Oh, my gosh. How lucky can that guy get? No, folks, you have to learn what the market does, all right? That's what you have to do, all right? And you don't learn it by live trading because in live trading, you're not going and going, I'm going to do a roadmap, I'm going to do another roadmap, I'm going to do another roadmap, I'm going to do another roadmap. That's not what you're doing it. Or that Scott is doing the math. And if I'm doing the math, you know you're in trouble, right, Cy? Because my wife won't let me touch the, cap the checkbook, all right? She won't let me do it. All right, so here, this is why it's so important that you understand. Unless you make this, 
this uh, part of your, your understanding of how you have to learn, all right? Your left brain has roadmaps in it because it has logic, it has analysis, it understands organization and administration, it understands the math and science that's in the chart, it's looking for knowledge and facts, it is detail oriented. That's the trader. What is the right brain? He's emotional. Intuition, oh my gosh, the worst thing gonna happen to you as a trader. I think it's going up, I think it's going down, it'll kill you, all right? Spirituality, we don't care about that in the Forex. Interpersonal skills, they're not talking from Stephanie and Cy aren't talking, so they don't need that. Art and music, we don't need that. We're not going to sing, uh, let it be, let it be, let it be. We don't do that, okay? Belief, a big problem, right? I believe it's going up. I believe it's going down. So anytime you're sitting there and you're going, I believe it's going down, I think it's going up, you know you're on the right brain, all right? And what's the problem with belief? It is extremely difficult to take belief out of anything, all right? Belief makes people fly planes into buildings, right? That's what they do. I believe that's good. I believe I should go shoot up a place, uh, go down the mall and shoot somebody. That's what belief does, okay? You don't want any part of that. And anytime you're in the market and you're going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I think I should move my stop. What should I do? Oh my gosh, I got a good trade on here, man. I'm up 12 pips. What do I do? What do I do? You don't have a plan. You see, where are you? You're on your right brain, all right? Now, don't, be, don't feel bad because every single person in this room has been there. Would everybody agree you have traded your right brain for a long time? Say yes or no. I'll be the first to say it. Okay, I am. Yeah. Well, I should win the first. Cy was. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Forever. Fest says. Okay. See. So, three hundred times walking. There you go. All right. So you know immediately how to stop yourself. You go, holy cow, my heart's beating out of my chest. What's the problem? My right brain is trading. God, got it. All right. Oh my God. I believe it's going down. I think it's going, Oh, it's not going down. It's going up. Oh no, no. You know, you're on the right brain, but how do I teach my left brain to, to understand this stuff? You do what I'm doing tonight with roadmaps and you do that with every piece of the Forex. You go and prove to your left brain because it's logical. It says, wow, we did this 300 times, 260 times it worked. Logically, I should pay attention to that, right? Wouldn't that be the first thing you say? Your left brain loves to uh, is full of analysis. What is doing right? What is doing this anal this uh, work doing? It is creating analysis. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, all right. Uh, organization administration. Do the do you think that the big boys who are printing the candles have organization and administration in the way that they structure their trades so that they can they know what to do? Absolutely. We're doing the math. You're doing fibs. That's a math function. All right. It's looking for knowledge and facts. If I did two, 300 of these and I saw that 260 of them worked, I would have facts. I would have factual knowledge that 88.9% of the time this will work. Do you think if I found something in the Forex that would work 88.9% or whatever it ever happens to be that I found that because I did the work, do you think that that would make me a better trader? Would that make you a better trader if you knew that you knew that you knew? Would it? Of course, of course. So what do I gotta do? I gotta teach my left brain. Every little piece of the Forex, you have to teach your left brain how to do it. How do I do that? Just like I'm doing here. I spend a day and say, okay, today is my day to work on roadmaps. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna find big dominant moves, okay? Here's a dominant move, all right? Let's see if it goes, all right? We'll pop a fib from the swing high to the swing low, all right? There's the 270, all right? Are we gonna to get to the 1270? I don't know. Well, they sure like that 270, don't they? Do you th wonder if they knew that. Gee, I wonder if the right, right left brain goes, well, hey, we got this math right here. All right. Uh, yeah, lock up that right brain and throw away the key or convince the left brain with the 300 routine. Exactly right. Will they ever get to that 600, that three, 618? Look at they never get there. Never get there. But guess what? You knew to move your stop here. See that? 
Now the poles should be predicted the way the poles work because the pole is a, is a pattern where this is not a pattern, this is just a move, right? So you use the poles, uh, you find the movement in there and, and you know, how did you get in? The pole going in, that's what we're trying to do out. Will they do that? They'll do it statistically. Will they, yeah, okay. Will they do it 100%? No, they don't do anything 100%, all right? All right, so here we go. We've got a big move up here, all right? There's a dominant move if there ever was one. All right, are they going to continue this? We do the swing low to the swing high right there. Let me get rid of this one so it doesn't confuse us right there. All right, so I know what I have to do. When I hit the 270 fib, which they knew exactly, I move my stop, all right? I'm headed to the 618, all right? Now I'm, I'm waiting for them to hit the 618. They don't do it. They immediately pull back. Okay, they pull back, and I take this win right here. That's what I take is that little win. I don't get that part but I don't lose either. You see that? I don't lose because I have a plan and the plan is to execute based on math because that's what the big boys are doing, all right? Let's go, go off the Aussie New Zealand. Let's go to the pound yen. I'll go over here where I'm using the major charts where I can just, this is where you play. This is your playground right here, all right? So we'll do the pound yen here. Let me make these candles a little bigger, make it easier to see, okay? There we go, all right? So I'm going to go into this area right here. See that? I've got a dominant move right here. There's a dominant move here, and there's a dominant move here. Now, this is going to be a question for you. Do I do this one, or do I do this one? Do I do A, or do I do B in here? Which one do I do this time? B. Nice going. B. All right. You see, this is a meandering move that just kind of moves down. This one is hell bent to make it go. B is more convincing. That's right, Cy. And see, you'll know to take that one if you do your 300. See, that's a good way to put it. It's more convincing. They are really trying to push it in that area here. Here, they're just trying to move. Maybe they're trying to push it in the area, but here they're definitely trying to push it in, the, in that area. So now we pop the fib from the swing high the swing low, and here's what we know. We already know what our overall targets is. We figured that out from the analysis. What we gotta figure out is where do I move my stops and where is it, uh, where if they break a certain fib, for instance here, right? There's not a lot of room here. There's not a lot of room here, but there's a pretty good opportunity there. So if I have a good opportunity here and I've got a trade on up here, should I make trade two in this wide open space right here with that big area? See how it was doing? A was fixing to move down. There you go, Cy. Yeah, there, your, your Texas buddy really helped you out, Cy. <laughs> All right. So see, you have, see the information you're getting? They often do, uh, but it's, it's not so much that, Amanda. You can tell. You can tell by just what it is after you do a whole bunch of them, you'll see that this is the dominant move and this isn't. This is a dominant move right here. We'll do this one next here. That's a dominant move right there, right? See how it is absolutely trying to move it down. See, they're trying to move it down. Here they're being successful moving it down, but here they are running it. So let's see how this one works out over here, all right? To the two, 270 right there. Move my stop. Will I get to the 618, all right? There's a 618 to the pip. I know I need to move my stop. I don't get stopped out. And where do they go? Uh, within pips of that 618. And they finally hit it over here, right there. Right. Why is it dumb? Vertical move after a car and a huger just to make its case stronger. It's, yeah, it's, it's all about, all right. So do you think there was more money coming in at one time here or there? So look at those two ones there. A, which one has the more money at the same time moving the candles? Yeah, see that, all right? And see, the, the question kind of goes away when you do 300 of them because you, you, you yeah, this one meandered down. This one said, we're going, boys, you are going. And sure enough, they did it again, all right? So what do I got? 14 or 15 for 15? Let's do this one right over here. And see, it's gonna be one that doesn't work real well, but it's really a good thing because you won't get, you'll, you'll get a trade on and it doesn't go where you thought it was. How many, has that ever happened to anybody in here? I put a trade on and it didn't do what I thought it was going to do. Has that ever happened to anybody in this room? <laughs> That's kind of, 
kind of a silly question, isn't it? Um, yes, Amanda says. Okay. So let's pop the fib from this dominant move, trying to push it into that area right there. You got a little pullback. All right. Well, it's a gap over the weekend, kind of screws it up a little bit. But you notice they know where the 618 is. All right. And they never get there. All right. So here's a good example there. I know to move my stop. I go, I go, I move my stop here and I move my stop here. So I got right in here. I've got my stop moved and it does that. Do I get, do I get taken out with a loss or do I get taken out with a win or at least a break even? You see that? See, that would have saved me uh, a win most likely. Yeah. See, but that would have saved me. It didn't go. It didn't go, but I didn't lose on that trade. Small win is fine. Right? Exactly correct. And I'm here, and it's a pound yen. Okay, let's go find another big move. Oh, this look at this dominant move right here. All right, pop this one from the swing high to the swing low right there. All right, 270, 618. They never get to the 1270 down here. See that? But it doesn't matter because I'm when I took the trade up here, I moved my stop when I hit the 270. When I hit the 618, I moved my stop here. When it broke here, I moved my stop down right in here. All right, then all of a sudden it goes sideways here, and right here I get stopped out. But I take a win here, a win here, and a small win here. See that? See that? Wow. All right. You see, do you think they're doing this? Is Scott just the luckiest guy on the planet, or is this what they're actually doing? Do you think this is what they're doing? They're doing it. That's what they're doing. You got to do what they do, right? This is why, you know, when you go and you try to Google something or you you'd get an ebook, they can't show you this kind of stuff. They can't do this because this is the finer points of trading. When you trade with the big boys, you have to know how the big boys trade. <laughs> Most people don't know how the big boys trade, right? Because they've never proven it to yourself. Dominant move right here. Let's see if we can get 16 for 16. Right here to here. All right. Let's see what we got. All right. So we know that we've got to move our stop here, here, and hopefully here if we get a shot. All right. So they knew that one right there. They knew that one right there. And they knew that one right there. Wow. And you see, in the process of going down here, if you want to stay in, you got to stay through the, through, through the flag. But you know that that's a flag pattern, which is the pole. And there they did it. You see that? All right. So we did 16 for 16. All right. How many more we got to do? 284 more, <laughs> 284 more. Uh, we just got to get it into their brains, knowing what they're thinking will keep us out of trouble. That's right. We got to get into our brain, knowing what they're thinking will keep us out of trouble. Exactly correct, Cy. All right. So did I prove my point? Let's start with that. Did I prove my point? 16 out of 16. Yes. Okay, good. 16 times. All right. Now, the next question is yours, and I'm not going to ask it. You got to ask yourself. You got to say, do I think I ought to take a couple hours off and I ought to go into some charts and I ought to go see if I can teach my left brain to find the dominant move and find out where I should move my stop? If the answer to that is yes, then you got to go do 300 of them because your brain needs 300. The way your brain works is it, you're looking at charts and you're doing some work, all right? But what it needs is a file cabinet up here that says roadmaps, all right? And it needs 300 images in here, 300 images. All, that's the only thing in here. No inverse head and shoulders, no bear flags, no bull flags, no triangles, none of that. Just re, uh, uh, roadmaps, okay? Then when you go to set one on, because you've done, you now know how to find a dominant move. You go to set one on. You now know what the plan is. Move my stop, move my stop, move my stop. I understand that. All right? That's the rules of the deal. All right? Now, every time you do it, your left brain, will, you go up to your left brain and say, am I doing this right? And left brain says, you got 300 up here that you did just like that. Yes, you're doing it right. All right? Now execute. See that? That's how your brain works. If you don't do the 300, here's what most traders do. They got a little file cabinet and they go, okay, I'm going to do some work in the charts today. Oh my gosh, there's a, uh, a, a turn right there. Wow, that's awesome. Look at, there's a close in reverse. Oh man, there's a descending wedge. So they put this in here, they put this in here, they put this in here, and they go, wow, look at this. I got a flag over here and they put that in here. All right. Now, when your brain, left brain goes to say, what do I do? It goes up here and says, I don't have a clue. You got 65 different things in here. What are you looking for? 
You see, that's why it doesn't work that way. This is why you can't learn the Forex in three weeks, right? If you're new in here, every, I don't know any trader who isn't going, where is the shortcut? Where can I find how I can become successful the fastest? All right, you wanna know how it is? The people who get there the fastest are the people who do the work, right? Yeah, brain goes, whoa, too much information. Exactly right, Si. That's the shortcut. Well, yeah, but you're telling me I got to do 300 everything. That doesn't sound like a shortcut to me. It's the only way you're going to treat your left brain to trade. And Vest says, I'm the champion in that, looking for shortcuts. <laughs> exactly correct. All right. You know, and there's not, sometimes you find good stuff. That's fine. Sometimes you find some good stuff. But the, the person who dedicates themselves to understanding every piece of the Forex is the one who's going to be able to put the right plan together when the chart says, here's the real estate of the day. What do you want to do with it? 